Okay, so now we're going to dig more into UEB editing. And for that, I'm going to open the UE editor again. I'm going to distort that a little bit. And the first button I'm going to show now is, is the pack button, uh, which basically um, sorts your UE shells and tries to pack it to a compact space. But it's basically all the code that Autodesk provided. So um, it's rather a, a shortcut. As um, the, the, the other option would be to go to f um, click it here in the menus. The next button is an explode button. And it is useful to um, break up your UE for the first time. So I'm going to select everything. And it will uh, break up anything that is apart from 45 degrees. It's the same as this uh, flatten mapping option. Or you can also say um, 45 degrees and everything that differs in that angle gets separated into uh, another cluster. Okay, the next button is crop. And what the crop button does is it crops your UV layout to the bounding box size. So say I have uh, this UV set uh, in more of a size like this and uh, if I press the um, crop button it will try to uh, fit the uh, selection into the outer UV box. Next up is a new function that has been um, added since uh, version 1.6 and uh, what it does it lines up your selection Sometimes you have to um, press it twice. Um, there seems to be a, a little glitch in it. I don't know yet why, but uh, I'll try to fix that next time. And um, it has two modes, basically. Um, if you click on it with the regular uh, left mouse button, it will uh, line up your selection in a horizontal flow. And if you press uh, the left mouse button, or the, the context button, it will um, set the flow on the other axis. And uh, notice also that this function, it uh, rotates each shell to a, a minimum space required. And um, there are some things that could go wrong. For example, if you have the angle snap toggle active, um, things might, uh, might go not so well. So uh, always toggle uh, the angle snap off so that it works proper. The next two functions are used with the um, edges or uh, vertex um, selection. For example, to disable that. For example, if I select um, a series of uh, vertex or texture vertex points, and if I go on the linear button, what it does is it um, uh, flattens or straightens the line automatically and the closest axis. It works with any kind of selection, either an edge or vertex. The next button is basically the opposite. It will relax your selection. And it, it is basically the same function you have um, in the menus here available. The next buttons are used to control UV islands. There are a few, and they are all kind of uh, different. The first uh, one uh, aligns your associated shell of your edge selection to that edge. I want to align this UV shell based on uh, this edge. Um, if I click on it, it will basically rotate the edge uh, to that amount so that this edge uh, snaps to the closest axis. Okay, it's a useful button for uh, compressing uh, space. Uh, what it does, it only rotates your selection 
and it tries to um, rotate it so that it reduces uh, a minimum height and uh, for example like this and you have to manually um, have to uh, fix it it's kind of difficult it's uh, never right and if you press this button it will basically uh, rotate it to a, a minimum height a stack function what it does it tries uh, it is by no means perfect right now but it tries to stack um, similar shells on top of each other for example uh, this one failed it will work by the way uh, best with uh, non-symmetrical um, or yeah non-symmetrical shells uh, for example a circle would be uh, rotation uh, symmetrical so it might not be the best shape but anything like an L or a P or some other kind of shape uh, will work uh, quite perfectly next is the iron button and the iron button is a way of uh, quickly uh, flatten a selection into one single shell as you can see I it took my selection and made a single shell out of it in detail what it does is that it assigns uh, a planar map and applies some um, uh, relax iterations on it so yeah it's it works on most faces next up are the texel density tools um, as you can see i have here three different objects and each has its own unique uh, texel density for example this object uh, the density is very dense and here you have the for example, on this object, the texture is scaled uh, very big. And this is about in between of the two. So, and now what I want to do is that I pick a density of one of the objects. So I click the pick button and it will automatically calculate uh, a texture size from a length and uh, the per unit value so uh, this means that every 344 units which could be about this a uh, texture size of 252 or 225 uh, pixels on each side uh, are used now you can apply this density information to any other object so simply select another object and hit the Texel button. And what it now does is that it scales the UV, the existing UV, um, so that it matches the Texel density of the input. It can also um, do things the other way around. So I pick the density of this object, select the other one and hit uh, apply Texel density and you can see it applies uh, even on this object the um, texture density that I picked up you can already see that in here it uses much more uh, texture space per unit okay so how do we get all equal well there's another function uh, which is called uh, normalizing the UV shells and it works best uh, on a, sh a single mesh so I'm going to attach the other objects are to the third one and if you hit that button what it does it uh, normalizes the UV shells just like the description says and you can see that um, some faces are now overlapping and the reason for that is, be is because um, the faces before had uh, the same position but a different scale the script uh, scales it in proportion based of the center of each shell. 